Welcome again for the medical student to join us in this series of lecture of cardiovascular disease. The title of our subject today is Infective Endocarditis. And our objective, you will follow this roadmap from the finishing clinical signs, symptoms, diagnosis, and the treatment based complication, prophylaxis, and summary at the end of the lecture. So endocarditis, either class 5 infectious endocarditis, this acute or chronic, and then infectious endocarditis. We mean there is an idus or vegetation, but there is no infective case. And this is infectious. Mainly bacterial could be a lot per organism. Infective endocarditis, definition and general information, It's an inflammatory process ongoing inside the endocardium due to the, the infection after endothelial or endothelium damage. Most often involving the site is left side of the heart, could be in the right aortic valve and might tell the most common valve to be involved. The endothelial lining of the healthy heart and its valve is normally resistant to infection with the trivial or bacteremia with the bacteria and fungi. Although few highly virulent organisms such as staphylococcal aureus are capable of infecting normal human uh, valve, but usually the initial step in the infective endocarditis, establishment of vegetation in the injured valve, in the disease valve, like the, the rheumatic uh, endocarditis the, of the endocardium, followed by a focal adherence of platelet and fibrin formations in the nidus of infective agent. The initial sterile platelet fibrin nidus then become infected by microorganisms circulating in the blood stream during bacteremia. Following colonization, then microbial growth result in a secondary accumulation more platelet and fibrin to form a vegetation. According to classification of the infective endocarditis, according to localization, either in the left side or the right side of the heart or device related. The left side is that the native endocarditis, native valve and prosthetic valve endocarditis, the process is usually early below one year after surgery or more than one year after surgery, even though organism is different. Right side infective endocarditis and device related endocarditis, while classification according to the mode acquis uh, acquisition of infection. In healthcare associated endocarditis, nosocomial or non non non-nosocomia, while community acquired infective endocarditis, there is intravenous drug abuse associated endocarditis. Few points of intravenous, usually recurrent, usually polymicrobial organ staphylococcus aureus account for majority of cases of endocarditis. Tricuspid valve, either alone or in combination, are the most often infected in the right side. Uh, during activity, uh, due to the activity of infective endocarditis, can be classified active infective endocarditis, either acute or subacute, or recurrence. The recurrence I relapse is the partial treatment of reinfection by the same or other organism. Really, it's a rare. But why we concentrate on it? It's the mortality rate is high. So it is 3 to 10 per 100,000 of population per year. Maximum, it's adult disease between the other 7 to 8 years old. More common in women. In general, Staphylococcus aureus is the most common pathogen. In developed countries, there is a lot of drug abuser and intravenous use. While streptococcal infection is still the most common in a developing countries. So, in a summary, rapid onset, acute onset endocarditis, usually staphylococcal aureus, while insidious onset, subacute, 
streptococcal covariance is the most common. In general, if we say what's the most common cause of infective organism of endocarditis bacteria, say streptococcal virgins, more than 75% of them. The common bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus, as we said in the Western nations, streptococci in general is the most common. Enterococci can cause flu in certain situations. Uh, not so common fungi, pseudomonas, and high sick group of organisms. Now, this high sick group of organisms, small, these groups of organisms consist, this list, this organism is a fastidious, slowly grown organism previously, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, previous associated with culture negative endocarditis, are slowly, easily isolated when incubated at the four, five to seven days. There is a rare causes are list in this list can cause uh, 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 bacteria or endocarditis. What's the non-infective endocarditis? Non-infective endocarditis, non-bacterial thrombo thrombotic endocarditis, refer to formation of a sterile platelet and fibrin. There is no nidus of infective or bacterial. This is thrombi on cardiac valve and adjacent endocardium. A response to trauma, circulating immune complex like SLE, vasculitis, or the hypercoagulable state. Symptoms are those of systemic arterial embolization, diagnosis by echocardiography, and the, and the negative uh, blood cultures. Treatment consists of underlying cause and anticoagulant. Come to that, the, our roadmap now to the clinical symptoms. Fever, malaise, and fatigue are sensitive, but non specific, associated with infective endocarditis. Suggestive physical findings include I have a patient with a PUO or fever for prolonged and that uh, there is no underlying cause, you have to suspect it, infective endocarditis, if we found any of the following, a new cardiac murmur, new onset of heart failure, conduction abnormalities on ECG, this suggestive perivalvular abscess, focal neurological signs, septic emboli, splenomegaly, and fatigue, splinter hemorrhage, Osler nodule, what this Osler is a volatile, purple, purple circumscribed painful nodule found in the pulp of the fingers and toes. Genuine lesion, this genuine lesion's pellet, arithmetic macule, lesions found in the sole and pulp. Rotis spot, hemorrhagic lesions of retina, leukocytosis, anemia, hematuria, microscopical hematuria. Multiple bilateral small nodule on chest X-ray, septic emboli, you have to put a suspicion if you have a patient with PUO or prolonged fever without underlying diagnosis. If you find any of the previous uh, 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 um, clinical condition, as we mentioned, you have to suspect infective endocarditis. Select the transthoracic echocardiography for all patients with bacteremia. In a patient with a high clinical suspicion of infective endocarditis, but normal transthoracic echocardiography obtained transesophageal echocardiography, particularly in the setting of Staphylococcus aureus bacteremia, if suspected. This transthoracic esophageal is the best of choice to identify paravalvular abscess and even the other vegetation. Fever, as we said, is common about 90% of patients. New intracardiac murmur also common about 85%. While rotis spot, particular hemorrhage, glomerulonephritis, as immunological complication, up to 30% of patients. When, when to suspect the patient have the uh, 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 clinical suspicion when the patient have a fever? As we said, sepsis of unknown origin or pyrexia of unknown origin, fever coexistent with, as we said, intra, uh, uh, intracardiac implantable material, prosthetic valve, uh, infective endocarditis history, congenital heart disease or valve disease, infective endocarditis risk factor like 
intravenous drug user, congestive heart failure symptoms, new heart block, positive blood culture, focal neurological sign without non-etiology, peripheral abscesses in the kidney, spleen, brain, vertebral column. Come again into the our objectives or roadmap, come to the diagnosis. Apply the modified or easy memory, Duke criteria below to diagnose endocarditis. Diagnose endocarditis in patients if we have two major criteria or one major and three minor or five minors. Duke criteria, this is a major. In a summary, we will discuss it later. Blood culture positive for infective endocarditis, really two blood culture. Evidence of endocardial involvement by echocardiography and the minor predispositions, heart condition or IV drug abuse, fever more than 38 degrees centigrade, vascular phenomena, arterial emboli, neurological phenomena like glomerulonephritis, Osler, nodule, growth spots, and my microbiological evidence, positive blood culture, but do not meet the major criteria. So this two major diagnoses, one minor, uh, one major, three minor, or two, five minors. This Duke criteria is really applied 1994 by Duke Universities, by investigators. It really is a modified old von Ryan criteria. And this modification to the von Ryan due to the introducing of echocardiography in diagnosis, also appearance of injecting drug user, right side heart failure, use of transesophageal echocardiography, and also some cases caused by infective endocarditis by agents of QP, Vercox, Lapernitae. So it's a revised the Duke criteria. And the major criteria in the details, isolation of causative orgasm by two separate blood culture, at least 12 hours apart. Predisposing heart condition or injection drug users. Positive echocardiograph. What's the positive echocardiograph? I mean, uh, suggestive endocardial involvement evidenced by oscillating mass, prosthetic valve adhesions, abscess, and new regurgitation. Other finding not highly suggestive. Minor criteria predisposing lesions or intraventricular assistant device, fever more than 38 degrees centigrade, sign of embolization. Please pay attention. General lesions and intracranial hemorrhage is embolization, while below the green color is immunological phenomena. Glomerulonephritis, Osler node, rheumatoid arthritis factors, and rotus spots in retina. Positive blood culture not meeting major criteria is that the minor. Echo finding not meeting the, as we said in the, that uh, specific is a minor criteria. So, in general, due to the Duke criteria, definitive endocarditis, possible endocarditis, rejected of the diagnosis. A pathology microorganism demonstrated by culture to culture or history in vegetation, a, a, a vegetation or embolism, two major, one major, as we say, three minor or five minor, this is definitive. While possible findings that are suggestive of infective endocarditis, but fall a short of definite, but not rejected. Little bit, there is no fulfill this criteria, but highly suggestive. While alternative diagnosis explaining the evidence of endocarditis, we find other diagnosis. Resolution of symptoms with a short course of antibiotics in a four days or less. So no pathologic evidence at surgery without the uh, antibiotic therapy for four days or less. This is, must be rejected to, from diagnosis of infective endocarditis. Come again to the, our roadmap, blood cultures. Blood culture always before starting antibiotics. Always triple symbol, uh, sample, aerobes, anaerobes, and mycotic 10 ml for each. Three sets of sample required. And echocardiography is important. As we say, transthoracic and transesophageal. Fundamental import in diagnosis, management, and even follow-up should be performed as soon as infective endocarditis is suspected. 
sensitivity of trans SPDL is bigger than trans thoracic. It's 90% to 100 versus to the 60 or 40 cities. Trans SPDL is a first choice to find the uh, infective endocarditis complication, as we say. Uh, so echocardiography finding in infective endocarditis, vegetation, abscess, pseudoaneurysm, perforation, fistula, valve aneurysm, valve dehiscent for prosthetic valve. Again, to our roadmap is the treatment basis. Uh, uh, success relies on eradication of pathogen. Bacteriocidal regimen should be used. Combinations must be used. Uh, parenteral uh, uh, is the, the root of choice. Drug choice is due to the pathogen. Surgery is used mainly in cope with that uh, structural complication. One point, uh, please, uh, uh, because of the, uh, as we said, it's rare, but it's high mortality. If the patient come with the suspected endocarditis with cardiovascular instability, when aspirate the culture, start treatment right away. As, as I said, empirical treatment according to the most probable suggestive organism. But if the patient cardiovascular is stable and aspirate culture with the result of the culture. And the treatment base is continuing. Native valve standard therapy, it takes two to four, uh, two to six weeks parenteral to eradicate pathogen while prosthetic valve longer regime is necessi necessary over six weeks. In a streptococcal infective endocarditis, shorter, usually two week course, can be used when the combining beta lactams with the aminoglycoside. Most widely used drug amoxicillin and gentamicin. In beta lactams, are, uh, 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 allergy use vancomycin. Uh, uh, therapy, usually, as we said, parenteral. In the community, uh, this is in short, uh, uh, in the community acquired native valve, start vancomycin or ampicillin, uh, salpactam plus the gentamicin. Why nosocomial associated vancomycin, gentamicin combination, rifampin, and uh, antipsudomonas beta-lactams. Prosthetic valve, vancomycin, gentamicin, and rifampin. Neuroantibiotic selection after bacterial susceptibility are known. Continue treatment for four to six weeks, except in uncomplicated right side native valve, endocarditis due to the methicillin susceptible staphylococcal aureus, which can be treated by two weeks with the parenteral. Uh, with uh, the combination of nephesiline and gentamicin. And the indication of surgery is limited, but uh, we use it in, in the, this situation. Patients with the valvular dysfunction and acute heart failure, really the main indications in about 60% of indications heart failure require surgery. Other indication are to resistant bacteremia, more than three days on antibiotic therapy, relapse after prolonged antibiotic therapy for prosthetic valve endocarditis and staphylococcal aureus related prosthetic valve endocarditis. Uh, in the surgery, there is a golden rule. Valve repair is a preferred over replacement to reduce the risk of prosthetic valve infection. Come to the complication. Complication, congestive heart failure, most common complication. And as we say, the main indication for surgery, about 60% of infective endocarditis. Controlled in, uh, uncontrolled infection, persistent infection, perivalvular extension, infective endocarditis. Systemic embolization, brain, spleen, lung, 30% of infective endocarditis may be the first Neurological event, acute renal failure, rheumatic problem, and the myocarditis. <clears throat> Poor prognosis patient, female, staph aureus, organism, vegetation size is a big, aortic valve is a poor prognosis than other valve, prosthetic valve, older age, diabetes mellitus, low serum albumin, 
heart failure or a valvular abscess and embolic event. And prophylaxis, this is important. It will come across to you always. Some patient refer to you in some surgical intervention with the underlying valve disease. They ask you if you need prophylaxis to prevent uh, infective endocarditis. Okay. Uh, firstly, proper oral hygiene and regular dental review is the first and most important prophylaxis. Next, provided prophylaxis, previously they use a lot of cases. Nowadays, they don't need. As I said in your textbook, there is a mild, moderate, and high risk uh, cardiac lesion to need infective endocarditis. Uh, nowadays, is the, uh, the highest risk group include in this group only to give prophylactic uh, bacterial uh, antibiotic, I mean uh, prophylactic antibiotic. First group is the prosthetic valve or valve repair with the prosthetic material. Previous endocarditis, congenital heart disease, what a group, unrepaired cyanotic congenital heart, heart disease, palliative shunt and conduit, prosthetic valve, and repair with the prosthetic material or evidence of the six months after intervention. If the pro, uh, congenital heart disease repair or six months after repair. Valve disease in the patient with heart transplantation recipient. Prophylaxis is only indicated for highest risk procedure. Please don't confuse. The student always confuse with the first group. First group is underlying disease have a high risk uh, for infective endocarditis. This is the high risk procedure, surgery to do for patient have a high risk to uh, not every procedure do a bacteremia and need a prophylactic antibiotic. This procedure only need a prophylactic antibiotic in high risk group. Dental procedure that involve mucosal bleeding. Procedure that involve incision or biopsy of respiratory mucosa. Pro procedure in patients with ongoing GI or urinary tract infection. Procedure on infected skin skin structures or musculoskeletal tissue. Surgery to place a prosthetic valve or the prosthetic intravascular or intracardiac material. This is that the high risk mean A, A to D. This is high risk procedure mean the prophylactic antibiotic. Prophylaxis is only indicated for high risk procedure. Most patients require prophylaxis will be undergoing dental. Most of our patients. I don't say it all, but most of them is dental procedure. And the indicated antibiotic, usually oral amoxicillin or ampicillin, 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, select cephaloxin first generation, azithromycin, claritomycin, or clindamycin. I will discuss it better in detail. Standard oral, if the patient can take oral amoxicillin, Adult, two grams, as we said, 30 to 60 minutes before a procedure. Children, 30 to 60 milligram per kilogram, about 50 milligram orally, one hour before a procedure. If patient unable to take orally, amoxicillin or ampicillin by injection, IM or IV, two grams, or children, 50 milligram IM, IV, within 30 minutes before a procedure. Allergic to penicillin, use a clandamycin orally, adults 60, 600 milligrams, children 20 milligram per kilogram orally one hour before the procedure. Or we can use cephaloxine or the, uh, these uh, beta lactam not used really in patients with have hypersensitivity reaction type 1. And I mean immediate hypersensitivity reaction. It's contraindicated, cross uh, allergy about more than 10 person. Allergic to penicillin, we can use estromycin or claritomycin and those mentioned here. And come at the end of our roadmap summary. Infective endocarditis is rare, but serious disease with high mortality rate. Every case of fever of unknown origin should be suspected of infective endocarditis. Blood culture are essential for diagnosis. 
transesophageal transthoracic is the best method to monitor and follow up of the infective endocarditis. Antibiotics are the main treatment. Congestive heart failure is the most common complication. This is the main point in the subject. Pharmacological prophylaxis is reserved for high-risk patient and high-risk process. Patient with valvular dysfunction and congestive heart failure require surgery. And this is the, what's called genuine lesion in the palm of the patient, usually with the streptococcal pulpus endocarditis. Well, the genuine lesion is a more specific. Arithematous blanching macule, non painful located in the palm, and so. This is Osler node. The Osler node is more specific, like the genuine. It's a painful and arithematous nodule located on uh, pulp of the fingers and the uh, toes. More common in the subacute infective endocarditis, this Osler node 2 in the pulp of finger with patient with the infective endocarditis with the, the Staphylococcus aureus. Splinter hemorrhage is non specific. We use other causes that cause splinter hemorrhage. Non flanching linear reddish brown lesion found under the nail base. It's not all the nail, it's a short. We can measure it by millimeter. Usually, don't extend the entire length of the nail. This is also splinter hemorrhage. And uh, non uh, petechi non specific. A lot of causes or petechial hemorrhage, often located in the extremities or mucous membrane. This is in a mucous membrane and this in extremities. Also, this on hand petechial hemorrhage. This is in the eye also petechial hemorrhage. This is warring blunder syndrome. It's a hemolytic anemia, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and that they see that how destructions of RBC and cutting and sharp margin this is due to the prostatic valve and could be the prostatic valve also causes that the secondary or acquired von Willebrand disease. See you soon. Thank you for active participation. <clears throat>